Howdy, folks. I'm the guy with a face that's a joke. <laughs> I'm Amber. <laughs> and here's some Reddit. All right. Our first letter is titled, Am I a jerk for my response after my brother-in-law said my dress was inappropriate for a family gathering? Ugh. Hear me out. So my brother-in-law, my husband's brother, was married to a woman from Greece. Her name is Nana. And the reason for the divorce was because of how much my conservative brother-in-law tried to control her clothes and places she went. He didn't want the divorce and was hoping Nana would accept the life he offered, but she didn't. This happened two years ago, and he now moved back with my in-laws, and we've seen him more often. He tried to comment on how I dress multiple occasions, and it's unbearable. But since my in-laws said that he's struggling and depressed, I let it go. On Friday, my in-laws celebrated my husband's 30th birthday at their home, and I wore a heart-shaped blue dress and had my hair up. While we were eating, my brother-in-law pointed at me and said that my cleavage was showing and that I shouldn't have worn this dress because it looked inappropriate for a family gathering. I was utterly shocked. Everyone was staring at me and I felt so embarrassed and on the spot. He looked at me, waiting for me to blow up, probably, but I laughed at him and said, knock knock, and he said, who's there? And I said, Nana. He now paused and seemed confused at the mention of the name. He then faked the laugh and said, Nana who? I said, Nana, your business, what I'm wearing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he got upset and quickly left the table. My sister-in-law's laughed, but my husband and his parents were upset and later said that I was way out of line for bringing up Nana to my brother-in-law, knowing how heartbroken and depressed that he was because of her. His mom said that I was petty and that I didn't need to dig at him just to prove a point. My husband thinks that I'm wrong as well and that I was deliberately being hurtful by bringing up Nana. All right, folks, what do you think? Jerk or not the jerk? Not the jerk. I mean, I love how everyone's blaming OP here when he's the one who initiated the attacks. Right, like, and he's been doing this for two years, it yeah. sounds like, constantly, like, picking on OP's clothes. Yeah. Like, why isn't OP's husband standing up for her? Well, exactly. That's just it, is that OP doesn't need to deal with this. And everyone is like, oh, well, he's just heartbroken. Just leave him alone. Let him let him be a, a mean monster, right? Well, that's the thing is like, yes, you, you can be like heartbroken and upset. That doesn't give you an excuse to be horrible to other people. Exactly. And the divorce is literally his fault for wanting to control his wife. Yeah, and now he's trying to control OP. Yeah, exactly. It just seems like he has a control problem. He just wants to control people in general. Which yeah. Which is really unfortunate. Yeah, I don't think OP's the jerk here because, like, OP... I think OP's clapback was kind of funny, mm -hmm. <laughs> to be quite honest. I think it was probably a, a pretty hard lesson for him to take. So hopefully in the future he'll leave OP alone and keep this kind of as a reminder close to his heart that he can't push people around and expect not to get, you know, some pushback. And OP's husband needs to step up and start taking her side. Yeah, I agree. Our next story is titled... Am I the jerk for telling my boyfriend that if he wants me to wear makeup, he should learn how to apply it on me? I used to wear heavy makeup every day before the pandemic, but then I just stopped. Staying home broke me of the habit. Before that, I felt embarrassed to be seen without makeup. I had to put on a face to feel comfortable with myself. I even started getting lip filler. That changed during the pandemic. At first, by coincidence, staying home, I just started getting used to seeing my own face every day. And after a while, I realized I was happy with my own face. And when I put on makeup, I felt like I was in a costume. I also started to resent the fact that beauty standards influenced me so much that I felt like I had to be hiding my own face in the past. I threw out most of my makeup and it was expiring. I'd always used to say that I do my makeup for myself, it's my hobby, but I started looking more critically at that and how my hobby just happened to fit into standards for how a woman should look. I heard the metaphor decorating your own cage and it really resonated with me. Anyway, I met my boyfriend a year ago, well into my makeup-free phase, and we stayed pretty socially isolated for a while, but just this spring we started getting more social again and going out to parties. And recently I was showing him old pictures of some outfits I thought I could work for a couple's costume for a party. He seemed kind of wowed by how I looked, full face of makeup, blonde dyed hair, long extensions, lip filler, etc. He compared me to an Instagram model. I know he meant it as a compliment, but it didn't feel good to hear. He asked me if I could do my hair and makeup like that for him sometimes. 
I told him a lot about how I feel about my relationship with makeup, just like I did in this post and more. And I was pretty upset to hear him say afterwards that what he was asking for wasn't that deep. He didn't want me to change my whole face every day, just put in a bit of extra effort for special events. I said that to me, it was deeper than that. Plus, I don't think he realized how much extra effort he was asking for. So I said I'd wear makeup again on a few conditions. For the first six months, one, he buys any makeup that he wants me to wear that I don't currently own. Two, he learns how to apply it on me. There are videos on YouTube, that's how I learned. Three, he applies my makeup. I said that that way, he'd understand the work behind what he was asking of me. And also have to understand that if he wanted me to change his appearance to suit him, he'd be acknowledging that and acknowledging the ways he would like me to look different by doing the work himself. He said that wasn't fair, he didn't know how. I said nobody is born knowing how, I learned on YouTube and so could he if it mattered to him. He's been kind of frustrated with me since and feels like I'm being lazy. Am I the jerk for what I said about makeup? Oh, what do you think? I'm gonna say not the jerk. Yeah, I don't think that OP's the jerk. I think that this is pretty reasonable. OP isn't asking him to go and buy all new makeup for them. He OP is just asking for him to buy any makeup that he wants in addition, mm -hmm. right? And then I don't think it's also unreasonable to ask him to learn how to apply makeup. Like I know right. how to apply makeup for you. Right. And I think a lot of people just don't who don't wear makeup don't understand how much time can go into it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, especially if you're doing full face, you know, some people it can take them half an hour or an hour to do all of that. Yeah. And, full face makeup takes a long time to do. And, you know, that's time that someone's not able to do other things. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's really reasonable that if he wants a specific thing, OP is like, OK. I will do this for you, but you have to help me. Yeah, and I think that's actually very reasonable. I think that that, that could even be a bonding activity. OP's not even, like, against this. OP's like, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm open to this as long as you're willing to help me. But he's the one who's kind of being lazy here and being like, oh, I just don't want to put the effort in. Yeah, well, like, I was like, well, I don't know how to. And it's like, <laughs> well, you, you, you can you learn. learn. Like, yeah. I didn't, like, I wasn't born knowing how to apply makeup, you mm -hmm. know? And I mean, I think it's a fun skill to have anyways. I mean, I you know, I've always enjoyed doing Amber's makeup when I have had the chance. Not always. Sometimes not it can always. be a very frustrating endeavor because I I'm not very good. I blink my eyes a lot. <laughs> I cannot keep my eyes open. He, like, he'll like bring like the eyeliner or mascara near my eye and it's, like blink and stay away. <laughs> She'll like blink right as I'm like applying something and then like get smeared on things. And I'm like, no. I think, didn't we do a, a you doing my makeup video for this channel? We might have. Maybe yeah, I we did. Can, we can link to that if we have that. Yeah. I, I remember doing one for your channel. Yeah, I so. think it was either I pick out the makeup You picked or... out the makeup and apply. I think you picked it out. No, and... maybe you just picked it out, but I thought you applied it maybe. Yeah, I don't remember. We yeah, yeah, you did my makeup because, yeah, we had oh, to like. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> there even is video evidence of Brian doing my makeup. Yeah. So. Yeah, like I said, I don't think this one's unreasonable. I think that this would be a fun bonding experience for them to do makeup. I really do. I don't think that there's a problem here with OP's request. All right, folks, it is tea time. Make sure to grab your beverage of choice and let us know what kind of tea you're drinking today or or other beverage. I keep saying like <laughs> tea specifically. I'm trying to be a tea pusher. You can only have tea at tea time. I have mint tea. Yes, yes. Oh. Uh... You're put it, putting airs. on airs. I'm putting on airs. Fingers out. Pinkies out, SpongeBob. Pinkies out. <laughs> I got Wordle in three today. I have to say, and this is uh, what Mary had sent in yesterday. I love this. I'm not. I don't know if she was actually saying this is had her daughter's name this or not, but I think this is a joke. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's a joke. <laughs> I was at the park with my kids. Another mom called out, "Amanda Lynn, time for lunch." I approached her and I said. My daughter's name is Amanda Lim. I named her so that whenever a kid came to the door asking if they could pay, play with Amanda Lim, I asked, <laughs> have you had lessons? And the woman replied, I wish you hadn't told me that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it so much. It's such a great joke. And, or, or, or seriously, like if you named your kid that, that's awesome because like that's that's a great way to go. So I, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that story a lot. So thanks for sharing, Mary. And Brian has mint tea. Yeah, I have mint tea. And Amber knows this because she's a cheater again. How many days are you going to cheat, Amber? All of them. So, like, again, she made me convinced that she was telepathic today. Okay? So I was like, okay, I'm going to use telepathy. What's 
what is uh, what kind of tea am I drinking here, right? And then she's like, mint. And I'm like, what made you guess that, right? And she's like, well, I went out there and I smelled mint, so I figured you had mint. The dirty cheat. The dirty cheat. Yeah, well, I wasn't even sure. I was like just walking out in the other room. I had, had forgotten that he was making a scene. He's like, r like runs up to me, like waving his hand, like go, no, go, go. Uh, but I had already smelled the mint, so I was like, okay. I take my tea guessing very seriously. We need to preserve the integrity of this tele telepathy experiment that I'm running with Amber. <laughs> Our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for my reasons of no plus ones on my wedding causing several people not to attend? I'm getting married and like every other bride, I too have certain rules that I want for my wedding to go smoothly. One of them is no plus ones rule. Only people named on the invitation are invited. The criteria I have for people who will get to bring their partners are one, both me and my fiance knows of your partner and have met them. If I know of your partner and my fiance doesn't, that disqualifies them and vice versa. Two, if I personally go to dinner with you and your partner. Three, if I'd invite your partner as a separate person anyways and not just because they're your partner. Four, if your partner is also a friend of mine. Those who meet that criteria get to bring their partners. If they don't, then they don't get to bring them. Simple. That also excludes long-term relationships, engaged couples, and married couples as well. We know it might seem harsh, but those are the rules that we've decided to set so that we can be more comfortable. It has nothing to do with budget or venue capacity, purely our choice. Several people have denied the invitation to our wedding due to these rules. One of them was my cousin. My cousin has been engaged to this girl for a year now and was upset that we didn't include her. The reason why she was excluded because my fiance hasn't met her and she's not a person that I would personally be friends with either. I told my cousin how heartbroken I am that he will not be coming to the wedding due to this and I expressed my distaste for the fact that he can't be away from his fiance for a few hours to honor me and my fiance. Couples don't have to be together the whole time. Then he basically told me that I am extremely disrespectful and a huge jerk. I asked him to explain and he said word for word, let me get this clear, you want me to come to honor your wedding, honor your love story and all that, but you can't respect me enough to invite my fiance. I can be without my fiance for several hours. Heck, we even spend days apart in vacations and our own separate friends group sometimes. What bothers me is not being away from my fiance for some hours, but the fact that you excluded her for those reasons. I told him that those are the rules, take it or leave it. And he says he finds my rules extremely disrespectful, but since it's my wedding, he has no say in it. I told him good and to stop BSing me and show his support by respecting and attending. He said that while he respects my extremely exclusive and disrespectful rules, I'm a fool to believe that he will care more about valuing my wedding over his fiance. Am I the jerk? All right, folks, what do you think? Jerk or not the jerk? I'm going to say OP's the jerk here. I think this one's kind of complicated. I don't necessarily think that... O I think that OP is a jerk, but not necessarily for probably the same reasons as you. Well, okay, I think... First of all, like her cousin has said, I'm not going. Yeah, like, OP yeah. is allowed to impose whatever rules. And I think exactly. they're bad rules. Like, I, I think they're bad wanna, rules. Yeah. I'm going to set that out, uh, but we'll set that aside. I think the big or a big issue here is that OP is now trying to force her cousin. So she's like, these are my rules, take it or leave it. And when he says, I'm not coming, yeah. then she's like, well, no, 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 you have to come, right? Like, yeah, yeah, you, have to, yeah. you have to show up and respect me. And I think everything her cousin said, I am 100% on board with, you know, a wedding is not just about the couple getting married. It's yeah. about, you know, this community. And sometimes you invite people to your wedding who, you know, you don't necessarily know. Like, if we'd been able to have our in-person wedding, one of my cousins constantly, like, cycles through girlfriends. And he was going to be able to have whichever girlfriend he was with at the time at the wedding he had asked. And I was totally cool with it, even though we didn't personally know her. Yeah, well, I mean, I think we're actually on more on the same page than I realized. I definitely think that OP is the jerk here. I don't necessarily think that the cousin is really in the wrong, but uh, I do think that OP is able to set whatever rules they want for their wedding, and that's really just kind of at the end of the day. I, I think really where I draw the line is them being trying to coerce their cousin into going, even though they said that they don't want to go. 
Right. Like, you are allowed to set rules for your wedding, but you can't expect people to attend if the rules are going to hurt, be hurtful. Yeah, I mean, imagine, like, someone sets up a wedding where they're like, everyone must wear spiked shoes to the wedding. And someone's like, hey, I don't like spiked shoes. Can I not? I'm not going to go to your wedding. And then being like, well, you're disrespecting me by not going to my spiked shoe wedding. Like, <laughs> I mean, that's just kind of like. No, I mean, I just don't want to go because I don't like the rules that you set out. I mean, I, I, I am afraid of spiked shoes. I've had my foot stepped on by spiked shoes before, you know? Yeah, well, and OP is also, uh, as the cousin kind of points out, trying to, expecting everyone to value yeah. OP and her husband more than their own partners if yeah. their partners aren't invited. Like, it's very customary for people, particularly in long-term relationships, like OP and its cousin is engaged, mm -hmm. to be allowed a plus one yeah. for a wedding. Yeah. Our last story is, am I the jerk for letting my niece send banned books to my house? A little backstory before the issue. I'm a 36-year-old female, and my niece is a 16-year-old female, and she and I are extremely close. My younger sister had her when she was 18, and I helped raise her while my sister went to university. The dad isn't in the picture. My sister married her current husband, Jay, a year ago. I'll admit I'm not the guy's biggest fan. He's extremely conservative, and our opinions tend to clash a bit. But my sister is happy, so I typically don't say anything. My niece is not his biggest fan and has been spending a lot more time with me. My niece loves to read, something she definitely got from me. She spends every weekend and most of the summer with me. She has her own room at my place. When her mom first got married, she was complaining to me that Jay had started becoming overbearing and in putting rules that were never in place before like a much earlier curfew, policing how she dresses, going to church every Sunday, and after going through my niece's book collection, telling her that she's not allowed to read certain things. That includes anything having to do with the LGBTQ community, adult fun time, or mythology. She mythology? Got... <laughs> well, because he's, he's uber religious. She got around the church Sunday rule because she stays with me, and I suggested that she send any books that she would be considered banned to my house so she can read them while she stays with me. Well, it was her birthday a few weeks ago, and Jay got her a gift card for books. She used the gift card to buy the Heartstopper series, which she sent to my house, since the book is about a teenage gay romance. She was asked if she had used the gift card, and she said yes, and my sister and Jay got suspicious that no books had come in the mail yet. They pressured her into telling them about where the books were, since it was technically their money, and she admitted that she sent the books that she can't read at home to me. It's not technically their money, it's a gift! Right. Jay kicked her out of the house for this, and she's currently staying with me now. My sister wants her to come back home now that things have cooled off with Jay. I left the decision up to my niece, and she wants to live with me now, and my sister is pretty upset. Jay and my sister think I was a jerk to go over their heads and let her send the books here. Most of my family is on my sister's side except for my dad. Am I the jerk for letting my sister send banned books to my house? Well, what do you think of this one? Jerk or not the jerk? Not the jerk. Her stepdad's rules are overbearing and overly restrictive. And, I mean, I'm really glad that the niece does have Opie's house to go to. Yeah. Like, to ban anything that, like, she had been raised a certain way for the first, you know, however many years of her life, and all of a sudden this guy comes in and is like, my house, my rules, and, like, now is policing how she dresses, mm -hmm. what activities she gets to do, what books she gets to read. I mean, it really bothers me anytime someone's like, hey, you can't read gay stuff. Like, yeah, that's just that so doesn't not make, cool. It doesn't make any sense. And, and, I mean, I think that, you know, the aunt here, OP here, I think they're just looking out for their niece, and hopefully their niece appreciates it, and, you know, you can't force them to go and... Well, so I technically think that if the niece is under 18... She is, she's 16. Yeah, she's 16. So unless she gets emancipated, there are laws about her being home and whatnot. I don't know if, like... I don't know what the rules and laws are. I, I, I don't know about how exactly you can go about with forcing a kid to stay at your home or not when they're under 18 like that. But I do know if you're emancipated, then you can, you know, stay wherever you want. So I think if the aunt is serious about having the niece, you know, stay there, it might be a good idea to look into emancipation just because that way the parents can't try to pull something and, you know, uh, get them to say that they're being kidnapped or something like that. So I, I think that there is some some kind of thing that OP should do here to protect themselves. But I don't know how severe the situation is. Yeah, I don't either. But it sounds like the sister just wants her daughter to come. She doesn't sound like she is, like, actually sending, like, the police after her or anything. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I think, you know, the big question here, is OP in the wrong for letting her niece uh, have access to these books that her parents won't let her read? No, a public library would do the same thing. Yeah. Um, And so, like, 
I, I think it's great that Opie's giving her niece, like, a safe place to read the book she wants to read and, you know, be her own person apart from her stepdad's rules. Yeah. All right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, consider giving us a like. And if you didn't, consider giving me a dislike. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> Just airing out some dirty laundry, folks. Some dirty laundry. Yes, Brian was like, I have to go look up a joke. And I, at first, I, I could have said something mean, but I didn't. And then I told him that I was would have said, Are, is it your face or something like that? I don't remember. It was silly. <laughs>